Hello friends, welcome back to csup.net online training video series. Today we are going to discuss one of the important concept anonymous method which is also related to delegates only. So what we are going to discuss in this video? In this video we are going to discuss the following six pointer. First we will discuss what is anonymous method. Then we will discuss why do we need anonymous method. Then we will understand anonymous method by taking multiple examples. Then we will discuss what are the advantages of using anonymous method. Then we will see example of anonymous method where we will access, I mean where anonymous method will access the variables which is defined in the outer function, right? And then we will discuss what are the limitations of anonymous method. Uh, with that, we will conclude today's video. So before uh, proceeding to this video, let us read the note point. Anonymous method are related to delegates only. If you have not watched our delegate videos, please watch them before continuing with this video. Why? Because if you do not understand the delegate concept, if you have no idea about what are exactly delegates, then it will become very difficult for you to understand this anonymous method concept. So it is mandatory the, or you can say the prerequisite for this video is delegates. Right. So let us start our discussion with the first question that is, what is anonymous method? As the name suggests, an anonymous method in C sharp is a method without a name, or you can say a code block without having a name. The anonymous method in C sharp are defined by using the delegate keyword and can be assigned to a variable of the delegate type. If this is not clear at the moment, then don't worry, we will try to understand this. Uh, definition of what I'm provided here with some examples, right? So before understanding, let us understand why do we need anonymous method. So in delegate videos, we discussed how to bind a delegate with a method or you can say how to register a method with a delegate. There are four steps we have already discussed. First of all, what we need to do, we need to create one delegate. The step one, you need to create one delegate. Step two, you need to create the handler method or you can say the method he, which you want to register with the delegate that you need to create. In step three, you need to create an instance of the delegate and while creating the instance of the delegate, you need to pass the function or method as a parameter, right? That is the step three, right? Once the step three is completed or you can say once you created the instance of the delegate, in the step four, you need to invoke the delegate. And when you invoke the delegate, then the delegate is pointing to some method, right? That might be a single method or multiple method. Then those methods are going to be executed. And this is what we have already discussed, right? So before uh, understanding anonymous method, so first of all, we need to understand the delegate because anonymous method are related to delegates only, right? Let me, uh, okay. So you can see this example. So here you can see this is, this is nothing but your step one that is creating one delegate. So let me write the step creating delegates. This is nothing but uh, your step two, or that means you can say uh, defining the methods. Defining, defining the methods, right? And you can say once the step two is completed, then you need to create an instance of the delegate. Step three, creating an instance of the delegate. So this is step three. And once you create an instance of the delegate, then you need to invoke the delegate. This is invoking the delegate, right? And when you invoke the delegate, then the method which is defined by this delegate is going to be executed. So let me uh, again explain you the concept. So here we have created one delegate and the return type of this delegate is string and this delegate taking one parameter of string type. That means we need to define the method whose signature should be same as this delegate signature. And if you look at these two method, right, that is greetings and greetings two, then you will see that this method taking one string parameter and the return type is string and this method also taking one string parameter and the return type is string. That means the delegate signature now is the same as this two method signature. That means what? It means now we can register these two method with the delegate. How we can register a method to a delegate means we need to create an instance of the delegate. So, so we are creating an instance of the delegate means what? Means now this is nothing but a class. 
how let's see whenever we are creating a delegate and when we compile the application and whenever compiler see this delegate keyword then what compiler will do is it will convert this delegate into a class uh, that class is going to be a sealed class and that class is going to be inherited from the multicast delegate class right as this is a class so you can create an instance of the class like this see and while creating the instance we need to pass the method name as a parameter to the constructor so the, to the constructor here i'm passing greetings and as this method is a static method right you can pass this method by using the class name or even you can also pass it directly without using the class name in this case because both are belongs to the same class only right and if possible it is also possible that you can pass multiple methods right and if you want to create this delegate as a multicast delegate what you don't need to do you just need to use plus equals operator and you just need to pass the second function right so in this case what will happen now when we invoke this delegate right gt dot invoke so you can invoke in this way other option is also available where you do not need to uh, i mean where you do not need to pass the uh do not need to use the invoke method so directly you can also invoke like this but i generally prefer this approach because it explicitly uh, mentioning that i'm just going to invoke this delegate right so when i invoke this delegate then the functions or the methods which are referred by this delegate is going to be executed how many methods are uh, referred by this delegate two methods one is greetings and one is greetings two in which order this method are going to be executed the order in which they are added to the delegate instance so first i added this method so this method is going to be executed first and with this method we are it will pass this uh, string value and then it will execute the second method right and again while executing the second method the delegate will pass the same string value to that method so in this case you can see both method is going to print the same thing first this one is going to be executed okay to prove this i'm just putting the method name in the output screen right so in this case you will see that Greetings is going to be executed first and then greetings two is going to be executed. Why? Because in that order only we are registering the method. See, you can see greetings to why I'm not uh, greetings to hello.net. Why the second method is not executed? Let us investigate the same. So this is my delegate, greetings delegate. I'm also registering that with this one. And when I'm invoking this one, right, why? Because in this case, it is returning the value and two methods and, and we have already discussed whenever your delegate is a multicast delegate, if the method had returning the value, then what method, uh, then what value return by the last method that will be the return value. In this case, this is the map value. Right, this is the method and this method is the last method in the invocation list. So this method, what it is returning, that will be written as a value and that value is going to be uh, stored in this variable and that we are simply printing here. You can see greetings too, right? So this is how the delegate works and this is how we are working so far with the delegates, right? So in the F of example, what we are doing, we create, okay, so for better understanding or so to simplify this, let me remove this one, right? Let me remove this one also, right? So because this is not, uh, this is a single cast delegate. So, so far what we have done, we have created one delegate and the delegate name is nothing but your greetings delegate. Then we instantiate the delegate. While we are instantiating the delegate, we are passing the method name as a parameter to the constructor of the delegate. See, this is nothing but uh, we are instantiating the delegate and to the constructor, we are passing the method name as a parameter. And finally, we invoke the delegate and this is the invoking statement, right? And when we invoke this delegate, the method which is referred by this delegate is going to be executed. This is what we have already discussed, right? As of now, this is the approach we are following to bind or register a method with a delegate and execute it, right? Now, now let us try to understand or try to observe our main agenda, that is anonymous method. And I'm, I'm, an anonymous method is also related to a delegate without binding a named block. When I'm saying named block, it means it's a function or method, right? We can bind a function or method to a delegate, or you can see you can bind a named block to a delegate. It is also possible to bind an unnamed block. Unnamed block means 
uh, you can say it's an anonymous method to a delegate. And whenever you are binding an unnamed block, means the block which doesn't have any name, right? Then you can say that that is nothing but one anonymous method, right? The following example, okay, let us rewrite the same example uh, to understand this. So in this case, if you look at this method, right? So this is nothing but your method and you are binding that method here. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to create an anonymous method. So anonymous method means anonymous method are created by using the delegate keyword and they are going to be assigned to a type of delegate, right? So if you go to the definition, right? So if you go to the definition of anonymous, what I'm mentioning here, the anonymous method in C -sharp are defined by using the delegate keyword and can be assigned to a variable of a delegate delegate type. So in this case, I'm going to create the anonymous method by using the uh, delegate keyword. So if this is nothing but anonymous method. So this anonymous method, you can say it is nothing but your anonymous method, right? So in this case, this method doesn't have any name and it is created using the delegate keyword and any number of parameter you can pass, you can pass within this parenthesis. And this anonymous method always assigned to a type of delegate, right? So in this case, you can see greeting delegates, it is nothing but a delegate. So in this case, I'm not passing any named block, I'm passing an unnamed block. And whenever you are passing unnamed block, means it's a del uh, it's an anonymous method and you have to use this delegate keyword to create the anonymous method. And in this case, this method is no more required. So you can comment this. Now, if you run the application, then you will see that this statement is going to be written and that is what is going to be printed, right? Okay, let me remove this one. This is no more required. Let me run the application, right? Yeah, the application is running and you can see we are getting the output as expected. So anonymous method means what? The unnamed block, which is created by using the delegate keyword, any number of parameter you can you want, you can pass within this parenthesis, right? This is nothing but your input parameter. And you have to use this delegate keyword and you have to assign this anonymous method to a type of a delegate. And in this case, you can see greeting delegates, it's nothing but it's a delegate, right? So this is how you need to work with the anonymous type. As you can see in the above code block, uh, above code block without a name. So you can see, the above code block is without a name and it contains only the method body. You can say this is nothing but your method body. And this method uh, or unnamed block is defined by using the delegate keyword. And here we do not require to write any kind of access specifier like public, private, protected. Even we do not need to write any kind of a written keyword like void, integer, double. The point that you need to remember is anonymous method are always going to be void type and moreover you cannot reuse the anonymous method. So you cannot reuse this method means if you define this method in this place means you are going to use that block code block only in this place right you know you cannot reuse this code block anywhere else so wherever you define the anonymous method at that place only it is going to be used why it, it makes sense because it doesn't have any name if it doesn't have any name then how you can call this code block from other places you cannot code block if it is having a name then you can call it so function they are having code block with name as they are having names, so you can call them from anywhere. And this code block, uh, it doesn't have any name. As it is doesn't have any name, so you cannot call this method. Or I'm sorry, you cannot call uh, you cannot call this anonymous method from anywhere else. What are the advantages? Right, the advantages is lesser typing. Generally, ad anonymous methods are suggested when the code volume is very less, and if it is one time use only. You can see. The code is very less and it is going to be used only one time and for that purpose I can create the anonymous method. Now let us proceed and try to understand anonymous method with a different example by taking different scenarios. First scenario anonymous method accessing variables defined outside right so okay let me copy the code. So in this case you can see this is my anonymous method. This is my anonymous method. In this method, whatever input variable uh, this anonymous method taking that I can use, even any variable which are defined outside the anonymous method, 
that I can also use like this. So here you can see this message property, I can access within the anonymous method. This is also possible. So you can declare one variable from outside of the anonymous method and you can access that variable within the anonymous method. This is the local variable. This variable, this parameter we are passing to this anonymous method, but this parameter we are not passing. This is defined outside of the anonymous method, but still you can access this, right? Now run the application and you will see the output as expected, right? So you can see, both message and name are going to be printed, right? Name, prana, and message welcome to .NET tutorials, right? Now, what are the limitations? The limitation is that you cannot use any kind of a jumping statement. Jumping statement means, suppose you want to write some go to statement. <coughs> if you want to write some go to statement, you cannot write. So it will give you some kind of compilation. So no such go to statement within the scope, right? So identifier expected, right? Suppose you want to write some continuous statement. You cannot use continuous statement. That means the jumping statement are not break, continue, go to this are not acceptable within the delegate. Then second anonymous method cannot access the ref and out parameter. If you are having some output or a ref parameter, then you cannot also access them. So in this case, you can see this is some variable, this is one output parameter. And if you try to use this output parameter within the anonymous method, then you will get some kind of a error, right? Compilation error that you cannot access in and uh, you cannot access out and rep variable, right? Points to remember while working with anonymous method. The anonymous methods are defined using the delegate keyword, right? The anonymous method must be assigned to a delegate type. You can see. They are defined by using the delegate keyword and they must be assigned to a type of a delegate type, right? This method can access outer variable of outer functions, right? In this case, you can see they can access this, but if this method taking some output parameter out integer x, then you cannot access that x here, right? So this is not the syntax of this, right? Okay, to simplify this, what I can say, let me change this as some method, right? Taking some asking argument and let me write out integer x, right? So in this case, I assign some value to this x variable here 10, right? And then if I try to use this x variable here, then I will get some kind of an error, right? So you can see x and I cannot access this x variable here. I'm getting one compile time error. Right, this method can be used as event handler. Right, so once we discuss event handler, right, how to use events in C sharp, then at that time I will show you how we can use anonymous method with events. Right, so that's it for today. In the next video, I'm going to discuss one real time example of anonymous method. In case you need this document, right, what I'm showing in the presentation, then the link for the same is provided in the video description section. Please go to that link and get the document. Thank you. Thank you for watching.